in that. Ecclesiastics chapter 3. Ecclesiastics chapter 3. And here's what it says. It says, Yet God has made everything beautiful in its own time. He has planted eternity in the human heart. I want to concentrate there just for a moment that what God has done is he has placed eternity in our hearts. And because of that, we live in a body on earth, but we are in tuned with eternity in our heart. So those of us who've lost loved ones have gone before us. When you, know, when you say, man, I feel like, in my case, I feel like my mom is close to me right now. It's because I have eternity in my heart. And so, so God planted eternity in my heart, and, and I'll go a little bit deeper than that, uh, deeper in that. And it says, but even so, people cannot see the whole scope of God's work from beginning to the end. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the spirit of revelation. Give our minds illumination that we'd experience transformation. Lord, I pray you give us a mind to perceive and a heart to receive all that you have. And I ask that after this message, we will never, never, never be the same. In Jesus' name, and all God's people say, amen. 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 You may be seated. If you don't have a message outline, our ushers will be more than happy to give you one. I really believe that tonight, the reason why I wanted to start Easter with a message on heaven is because it is ultimately our destination. And it's very important for you to have a heaven conscience mind that you understand that we don't get caught up in living in the moment, but we get, we're always looking towards eternity. And eternity is a lot longer than a moment. And so God wants us to live with eternity in mind. And so when we talk about heaven, we, wanna, we should know about the place we're actually going to. One of the things that I do uh, when uh, I, I'm the one in my family that plans our vacation. And so I ask my wife, where would she want to go and give her some options. And then what I do is I do all the research for it. So I research the hotels. I research what's around there. I, I do all the research on trying to fly, get the best flights, best deal in hotels and all that kind of stuff. Because I want to know my destination. I want to have an idea of where I'm going. And so when I see pictures that I'm do, uh, while I'm doing my research and I actually get there, I always remember, man, that's what I saw when I was researching it. But I would never have an idea of the destination if I never learned about it. And so I want us to have an idea what our destination is, what heaven is going to be, because it's like a vacation. If you understand what heaven is, you're going to do very little mistakes of not trying to get there. And so you're, you're going to be excited about getting there. So let me give you really quick some questions that I believe people have when it comes to heaven. The first question I, I want to I uh, ask is, will there be pets in heaven? Now, the Bible gives us some idea that there will be animals in heaven. The Bible says that a lion and a lamb have, have sat or are sitting next to each other. And it talks about animals uh, in, in more details. They'll be in heaven. Now, will your pets be there? I don't know. But there will be pets in heaven. Number two, will, will we be married in heaven? Will we be married in heaven? Some of you go, you know, man, I, I, <laughs> Luke chapter 20 says that, <laughs> Luke chapter 20 says that there'll be no marriage and nobody given to marriage because every one of us being the bride of Christ will be married to the groom who's Jesus Christ. Yeah. Amen. And some of you are going to be set free. No, I'm joking. I, mean, but I shouldn't have said that. I, I, my bad. No, hey, hey, here, here's another question people have about heaven. This is a real question people have about heaven. Will we have wings in heaven like angels? Okay. A lot of people, when uh, someone pass away, will post, people will post on, 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 on social media, they just got their wings. Well, I hate to be the spoiler, okay? But we won't have wings like angels. We will have crowns. 
And angels don't have crowns, but they have wings. Now, now, will we be able to, like, go from one location to the other location like a superhero? Well, there is some proof that that's in the Bible. Also, we know that when Jesus returned back into his body uh, and reappeared back to the disciples, that he went through walls and he ate. So there is this next level of a human body that will be able to do kind of supernatural things. So I can't wait. I'm, I'm probably going to try it when I get to heaven, try to walk through the gates, you know what I mean? So <laughs> see if it works. So it would be great. Uh, the next question is that I think people have about heaven is, will we see loved ones in heaven and will they recognize us? Absolutely. The Bible says, watch this, but here's what's important. The Bible says, you will, be known by the, you will be known by what you've done and be recognized by those who you, who you did it to. So think about all the people that you're influencing in life that when they see you in heaven, they're going to tell you thank you. They're going to tell you, man, you, 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 you played a part in my life and, and you invested in it. And so, so that's why investment on earth to as many people as you can reach will be a greater investment in heaven. And so it would be great. I think all of us are going to want to go to Moses. Come on. And if Adam's there, I think we're all going to kill him. No, I'm joking. You know what I mean? But, <laughs> but no, I think we'll recognize it. And then I think another question people have when it comes to heaven, which is the last question, is will, will there be sports in heaven? <laughs> now, I don't know. But I do know that cardinal and gold is in heaven. So... <laughs> So for those of you that don't know, I'm a USC Trojan fan. So, you know, I, I really believe there will be Trojans, warriors in heaven. So it will be good. Paul's writing to the church at Thessalonica, and he's actually writing to the church. And he says this in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13. Here's what he says. He says, and now, dear brothers and sisters, we want you to know. And I want, I want, I want to stop there for a moment because this is what Paul's saying. He's saying, you're the church. And writing to the church at Thessalonica, he goes, we want you to know. In other words, there's this emphasis that it's not like it's something that's an option, but rather it's an absolute. Like, you need to know what heaven is all about. Now, he goes on to say this, to the believers, we want you to know what will happen to the believers who died so you will not grieve like people who have no hope. Now, losing three loved ones in my life, grief is there. And, and that will happen. And that's very natural. There's nothing spiritual about grieving. If you grieve, it doesn't mean you don't have faith. It doesn't mean that, you know, you're not praying. No, it's a natural loss. It's an emptiness in your life that somebody in whom you love in the flesh is absent. But what Paul is saying, he's saying, listen, you don't have to grieve as those who don't have any hope because here's the thing. They may not be next to you in your house, but you know exactly where they are. There was a story about a man who, uh, while they were at a, at a sports game, couldn't find his son. He panicked because for the very first time, this son was separated from his father. Never had been separated before. When they would go to the store, they would be together. When they would go to the malls, they'd be together. He was never separated from his father. So his father panicked, told the, the officers that were there, they kind of shut down that area, and they found his son going to the bathroom the, rea the, the problem was that he never told his dad he, he was going. So his dad panicked. Why panicked? Because he had, in some sense, been away from his son. As life went on, the same son as they, he grew up went off to college. He was now separated again from his father. A friend of his father asked him this question. He says, hey, what's the difference of where your son where your son is being absent of your life today 
to where he was absent from your life when you guys were at the ball game at the, that one time. And the father replied, and he said this, the difference is, is that I know where my son is. My son's in college. I know where he's at. The comfort, the feelings of being separated are the same. The comfort of knowing where they are makes the difference. And so the thing is, is that when you know where someone is, there's a comfort that you have if they're a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. And we're going to get more into that. But I want, you, I want you to see what it says. It says, it says um, we want you to know what happened to believers who died so you will not grieve like people who have no hope. It goes, for since we believe that Jesus died and was raised to life again, we also believe that when Jesus returns. Now, now I want you to know that Jesus is coming back. Now, I don't want to scare you, but he is coming back. And I believe that we have seen, this is, I believe we are the first generation that has seen most or all of the prophecies being fulfilled in the Bible that would enable his return to come back. So he is returning. And I think a lot of times we sit there and we preach, Jesus is up there, Jesus is up there. No, you need to be clear. Jesus is coming back for his church, okay? So we have to, we have to live always with eternity in mind that Jesus is coming back and we don't know but we want to be ready at all times. And so it says this, God will bring back with him the believers who have died. Here's what I love about God. God is already showing us that he's relational. I'm going to bring all these believers back because I'm a relational type of God. He says, we tell you this directly. Now, here's what, again, Paul's emphasizing. He's saying this, God is speaking to me, and I'm telling you directly what the Lord is saying, and he's writing to the church. So he says, I'm telling you directly from the Lord. Who, I mean, we who are still living, watch this, we who are still living when the Lord returns will meet him ahead of those who have died. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a commanding shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God. First, the believers who have died will rise from the grave. Now, that can probably be a little confusing. Let me, let, me, let me share this with you. How can they be risen or, 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 or be resurrected back to Christ if, they're already, if they've already died and they're in, in heaven? Well, here's the thing. What Paul's talking about, he's saying that when someone dies, their soul goes to this place. And I'm going to talk about it. Their body remains in the ground. And he says, when the day of the Lord's return comes, their bodies will be resurrected from the ground and they will unite with their souls. And the Bible says they will get a brand new body. Okay? So, we're going to talk about this later, but I wanted to lay that groundwork so that you, 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 won't get un you won't misunderstand that. For here's what he says, then together with them, we who are still alive and remain on the earth will be caught up in the clouds. So you and I are going to be caught up in the clouds. They're going to go first. We're going to come right after, and it's going to be a big reunion. Come on, it's going to be a big, big, big reunion with everybody, and we're all going to have our new bodies. I'm going to be about 6'2". You know, I'm joking, you know what I mean? But we're all going to have our new bodies, and it's going to be fantastic. And look what it says. Then to, and, then, and then it goes, then we will be with the Lord forever. Here it is. Now watch this. This is what Paul's saying. He says, so encourage each other with these words. Not, so here's what he's saying. Death in the flesh has finality. But death itself doesn't have finality. So therefore, even though you may lose someone and you're grieving, encourage one another that we will one day meet again. And we will meet again and be with each other. So here it is. As a believer, they're no longer part of our past. They're now part of our future. So my mom is not part of my past. My brother, my sister are not part of my past. No, there's a looking forward to seeing my brother, my sister, my mom, because they're part of my future now. And so you and I have 
to encourage each other about what this heaven is all about. Look what Luke 23, 42 to 43 says. Then he said, Jesus, watch this. This is Jesus on the cross. And look what he says. He says, then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And look at Jesus' response. He says this. And Jesus replied, I assure you today, you will be with me in heaven. He didn't say that. He says, you will be with me in heaven. Come on, say it again. So let me kind of explain to you without trying to get so theological on this, okay? That word paradise actually means almost like a garden. So think about a Saturday morning when you and your family want to go to a nice park, you want to have a nice picnic, and you're in a beautiful garden, okay? And like you want to take your kids over there, and you're kind of walking around that garden, and everything is so precious and so beautiful. So right now, our, our family or people who have gone before us and are with the Lord, they are in paradise. They are in a garden right now, almost very similar to the Garden of Eden. It will be something that they are part of right now. They are part of this garden. They're, 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 they're doing their thing. They're having fun. But actually, this word goes even further. It means a resting place. It means, watch this, it means an intermediate place. In other words, this isn't forever. Where they're at isn't forever. It's not purgatory like a room. <laughs> They're in paradise. So you say, but pastor, I thought they were in heaven. No, they're not in heaven yet. They're in paradise. Now, what does that mean? Thank, thank, thankful that you asked, okay? <laughs> Revelations 21 verse 1 says this. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. What does that mean? It means this, that our destination is not there. The new heaven collides with earth. Earth is broken. When Adam and Eve sinned, earth became broken. A new heaven is going to come and overcome earth, and the perfection of heaven is going to make earth a brand new Eden for you and I to live in forever. And so those who are in the paradise will join us in the new heaven on earth right now. So we're not, we're going to go up there. We're going to have our marriage supper of the lamb. It's going to be great. It's almost going to be like when someone gets married, the marriage supper of the lamb means that it's like a, a reception. So we're going to have a reception for a thousand years and then we're going to reign forever here in the new heaven, which is on earth earth. Most rabbis believe that that location will actually be Jerusalem. And so we, there, that, that the new heaven on earth will be in Israel. It would be in Jerusalem. Well, wherever it is, it's going to be a phenomenal place. It's going to be great. It's going to be fantastic. There's going to be animals. We're going to live forever. We're going to have brand new bodies. It's going to be incredible. So when people sit there and say, oh man, we're going to go, we're going to stay, we're going to go to, uh, to heaven and we're going to stay up there. For eternity, no, no, no. Heaven is going to touch earth, and it's going to become perfect because, watch this, because earth right now is broken. Earth right now, listen to me, earth right now is broken. So you say, well, what about heaven? Let, 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 let's talk about this. The first thing you got to know about heaven is, number one, watch this, heaven is a real place. Heaven is a real place. Here's what the Bible says. The Bible says this in Revelations 21, verse 10. It says, so he took me in the spirit to a great high mountain, and he showed me a holy city, Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. It shone with the glory of God and, sp and sparkled like precious stone, like jasper, as clear as crystal. The Bi it goes, the city, watch this, the city wall was broad and high with 12 gates guarded by, guarded by 12 angels, and the names of the 12 tribes of Israel were written on these gates. So heaven is a, it's a location. It's a real place. It has gates. Come on now. It's a gated community. Okay. I was like, Lord, is there HOA fees? He goes, yeah, that's your tithe. And uh, I'm joking. But, but the Bible talks about that the gates, 
will be made out of jasper and they'll be made out of rubies. And, and, and heaven will look this, this glorious place. It won't be like a church decorated with fake trees. It, it will, it's God's kingdom. It's a place where we're going to reign forever. It's going to be here in the, the new heaven on the new earth. And, and we're going to have these things. So heaven is a real place. The second thing is that heaven is the right place. Heaven is the right place. <clears throat> Revelations 21 verse 4 says this. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Watch this. Hear me. Let, this, let the Holy Spirit comfort you right now. Okay? He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. And there will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. All these things are gone forever. He's saying, Pastor Obed, my mother died of cancer. She doesn't have cancer no more. She, I mean, she is free from that. Oh, but man, my, 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 you know, little Desi, you know, will be celebrating her life on Friday. She, she, you know, cancer, you know, she died of cancer. No, 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 friends, listen to me. Cancer killed her body. But it didn't kill her soul, and it didn't kill her spirit, okay? That lives forever. And so our bodies will die. And yes, there's pain. Why is there pain? Why is there crying? Why is it? Because earth is a broken place, okay? And we're going to talk a little bit more about this on Sunday. But earth is a broken place. And the reason why you and I, watch this, the, the reason why you and I are called to go into the world and make disciples, give you a sneak preview for Sunday, is for, is for this reason. God heals us so that we can go out and heal those who are being hurt by a broken place. Okay? So the world, well, the world, all it can do is break you. It's all it can. This is why God says, listen, we live in this world, but we're not of this world. Why? Because God made us whole, never to be broken. And so for you and I, we got to realize, well, I'm not going to go to church. You know, I'm going I'm to, you know, go out into the world. Let me just help you out here for those, some of you that are contemplating and some of you that attend church periodically, okay? Let me, let me just break this down to you. I promise you this, and I hate to say this as a pastor, but I promise you this. You stop coming to church and fellowshipping with believers and fellowshipping with God, you will end up here broken. Because the world, all it knows how to do is make you what it is. The world is broken. It does not know what to do anything other than that. Okay? And so this is why the church, right? The church is the habitation of God's presence. Paul describes the people that come to church. He says, he says, you are Christ's ambassadors, okay? What is an ambassador? An ambassador is the only official in government that's not elected. They're chosen. So God has chosen you to be his ambassador. So you weren't elected to be saved. You were chosen by God to be saved, okay? Now, what is an ambassador? An ambassador is a representation of a nation that is placed in a different place. So we are ambassadors of Christ from heaven placed on earth. And earth is our assignment. Now, every single ambassador in a foreign country that is sent by the government has a home. And that home in that country does not, those properties don't belong to the country. It actually belongs to the country that sent you. That's called an embassy. So God says, you're my ambassadors. You're a, I sent you to the world, but your embassy is the church. So here's the thing. The devil can't come into the church. Why? Because it's a territory that doesn't belong to him, and he would be trespassing on a place that God calls his own that's an assignment from heaven. And so you and I got to realize that heaven's a real place. Heaven also, watch this, is, a, is, a, is the right place. 
But thirdly, heaven is a relational place. It's a relational place. Look what uh, Revelation 21 verse 3 says. I heard a loud shout from the throne saying, look, God's home is now among his people. He will live with them and they will be his people. God himself will be with them. Friends, listen to me. You know, people are saying, oh, man, is it going to be constant worship in heaven? Worship, oftentimes what we see is, oh, you know, hallelujah, praise God. No, no, no. Everything Adam and Eve did in the garden was worship. So it's not like the whole time, every day, they were on their knees bowing to Jesus. No, no, no. They were, the Bible says, the Bible lets us know, gives us a little sneak peek, and it said that, God took Adam, he placed him in the garden, and he told him, I want you to steward over my ground. Now, I would find it difficult that if Adam was having to rake some leaves, he was also on his knees bowing to Jesus going, oh, I love you. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you. Rake, 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 rake. No, no, no. His work is worship, okay? His work is worship. So you and I will be living a normal life in a perfect earth that's heaven. There will be no crying, no tears, no pain, no cancer, no, listen, there will be no death. Why? It's a perfect place. Once earth became broken, All its assignment was to break everything that's part of it. And so heaven is a relational place. We're going to be in relationship with each other. We're going to be in relationship with with the Father. We're going to be in relationship with Jesus. You're going to want to go visit him. You're going to want to hang out with David. You're going to want to talk. You're going to want to, you know, talk some game with Moses. I mean, you're going to to want to look at, you know, you're going to look at Gideon's arms, see how, man, how did that job, you know, you're going to see all kinds of great stuff, right? It's going to be fantastic because it's a relational place, okay? The next thing is that heaven is a rewarding place. Heaven is a rewarding place. And look what the Bible says, Revelations 22, verse 12. Look, here it says, look, I am coming soon. Now, again, I don't want to scare you, but he is, okay? He's coming soon. Bringing my reward, here it is, with me to repay all people according to their what? So, you would sit there and think, well, Lord, you're giving me this new heaven on earth. Man, all this stuff that I'm a part of, wow, God, this this is a reward. I mean, what more can you give me? And here's here's what he's referring to. Angels have wings. You and I will have crowns. The Bible talks about that when we influence someone's life and lead someone to Christ, God adds things to our crowns. Now, there's going to be people that, so for instance, people are going to get saved tonight. People are going to get saved on Sunday. People are going to get saved on Friday, okay? The children's workers, the media workers, the the ushers, the volunteers, when one gets saved because they are doing the deeds, the work of Christ, the Bible says God adds to their crown. Now, you're going to see people in heaven that are going to have bling. I'm talking like major bling. Like people you never heard of, people you never saw on television, people you never saw on TBN. You're going to see people that you don't, you never even recognize. They're going to walk by you and it's going to be so bright, it's going to blind you almost like. Because they got so much bling because they've done so much for God. They, they've led so much, so many to Christ. They've helped, so, they, they've helped the poor. They've helped so many people. They did the deeds and God rewarded them. And then you're going to see people that you recognize in church. And they're going to walk past you and just have gold. And you're going to be like, where's your bling? And you're probably going to be like, oh, you was one of those people that was sitting all the time. No, I'm just, you know.
Now you sit there and you say, well, Pastor, you got to back that up theologically. Thank you for asking. Here it is. <laughs> Prior to your salvation, you were being judged for your sin. So when you didn't know Jesus as your Savior, you were being judged for your sin. Now that you are saved, your sins have been wiped away. Your name has been written in the Lamb's Book of Life. You no longer have a past no more. But what you are being judged of are your works. So he's saying, what, is, what are you doing with my son now? Now that I've given you eternal life, now I've given you a ticket into this, this place called heaven that's going to be on earth. Okay, now that I saved you, what are you going to do with my son? And that's why you're going to want to hear, when you go before the Lord, you're going to want to hear this. Well done, my good and faithful what? Servant. Well, what, was you, what were you faithful with? Lord, I was faithful with the salvation you gave me by sharing my faith with other people, loving people, being there for people, inviting people, investing in people, caring for people. All those good deeds, God is going to reward you for those things. I love what Titus says in Titus chapter 2. It says, for the grace of God has been revealed, bringing salvation to all people. So salvation is, is for everybody. And we are instructed, here it is, to turn from godless living and sinful pleasures. We should live in this, watch this, evil what? So we should live in this evil world with wisdom righteousness, and, and watch, and devotion to who? God. To God. While we look forward with the hope that to that wonderful day when the glory of our God, great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, will be revealed. So listen, he's saying, you're living in a broken world. Now, can I just park here for one second, and then I'll try to finish and get you home. And, and, and those of you online, you can... God bless you. Okay, now, <laughs> here it is. Here's what, this is what Paul is trying to tell us. He's saying this, the world is broken and everything about it will break you. So the question Paul's trying to tell you is, why are you so in love with this world? When this world is going to fade. It's going to burn up. Why do you invest so much in this world? Why do, you, why do you spend so much time in this world when God has a perfect place waiting for you? And he says, okay, I got this perfect place waiting for you. And he's saying, but you're focusing everything on something that is broken and temporary. And watch this. You are living for something that's broken. And if you're living for something that is broken, you will become broken as what you're living for. I'm not living for this world. I'm living for the kingdom that is going to come on earth, which is the new heaven that God has for my life. And so everything that I do is worship unto God. I go to work. I, that's a worship unto God. I come to church. I'm getting refueled, refreshed. I give my tithe. Man, I'm, I'm letting the Lord, I trust you with everything that I have. Man, I'm serving with the gift that God has placed in my life. Man, why am I doing that? Because I know I'm going to get a reward. He's going to reward my deeds. He's going to reward my faithfulness. And by that, watch this, by that, I'm letting the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, I'm letting my God know I'm not living for this broken world because in return it's just going to bring back brokenness to me. I'm living for a perfect Jerusalem that one day I'm going to be a part of and live forever. And so we can't, we got to, watch this, hear me today, Pastor Obed, explain it, here it is. We love the people in this world, but we don't love the world because the world is broken and the world is can only break, it can never build. And I'm going to get a little bit more about that. I don't want to get so, so ahead of myself. But for you and I, this is what we have to understand. So what do we have to do? Number one, here's what we have to do. Number one, we got to refocus my energies. 
you got to refocus your energy. You're putting your energy in all the wrong things that are broken. And that is why, watch this, sir. Watch this, man. You know what you're getting in return? Brokenness. Look what the Bible says. The Bible says this. So we don't look at the troubles we can see now. Rather, we fix our gaze on things that cannot be seen. For the things which we see now will soon be gone. But the things we cannot see will what? Come on, will what? Will what? The, the Bible goes on to say this. Look what it says. Look what it says in Matthew chapter 6. Don't store up treasures here on what? Why? Why, why don't I want to do that? Because it's simple. Why would I store up my treasures in something that's broken and temporary? But it says, where moths eat them and rust destroys them and where thieves break in and steal, store your treasures in what? Why does he say that? Because... There ain't going to be no rust. Nothing's going to be destroyed. And no thief can get past the gate to break in and steal it. So he's telling you, this is where you invest your life in. You, you, invest, in, you invest your life into eternity. Why? why, can, why am I, what, what makes me want to do that? Pastor, it's simple. Eternity is in my heart. He placed eternity in here. And, he, and the reason why God did was because what he placed in you. Listen, what did he place in your heart? Jesus Christ. You have Christ living in your heart. You know who else lives in, lives in, in, in your heart too? The Holy Spirit. So you have the Holy Spirit now living. Man, he's guiding you into all truth. He's reminding you of the Jesus that died on the cross for you. He's reminding all those promises, the 7,000 promises that are in the Bible. The Holy Spirit brings things back to remembrance. There's three things he put in your heart. The, fa the, the Son, Jesus Christ. Listen, the Holy Spirit. The third thing he placed in your heart, eternity. I put the Holy Spirit in you to guide you on earth. I put the Son in you to give you power over this earth. But I put eternity in you so that you can always see where you're going. Because this right here is just temporary. I got a better place for your life. That's why he did that. So we got to re, we got to, we got to, watch this. We got to refocus our energy. This next, the second thing we got to do, we got to reach people. Man, if we know, if we know that this is broken and we have this revelation that the world is broken and the outcome of it will be broken... When was the last time you lived for the world and came out healed? When was the last time the world made you a whole person? It's broken. And all it can do is reproduce what it is. Brokenness. And this is why the world is broken. I don't care who's the next president. I don't care what they set up in Europe or around the world. They can't fix it. Why? Because the world is broken, okay? The only people that can actually bring healing are the people who have been healed. You and I, we're not going to fix the world. The world's going to burn up, but we can fix people. Come on, we can, we, can, we can use our testimony to heal people's lives and bring them to the place that God has for them. So we got we to gotta be tenacious when it comes to reaching people. We should sit there and tell our friends, why are you doing that? Well, because, you know, I don't know what else to do. Blah, blah, blah. I was at Starbucks yesterday. I was meeting with one of our guys at Starbucks. We were right there, Madison in India. Uh, the Starbucks right here. And I, I, I haven't been there in a long time. And, uh, but, but I said, hey, meet me there because, it, yeah, you know, it's Perfect place to meet at that time. So we're sitting there, we're having a great conversation outside, and all of a sudden, man, these two, three or four kids, they just start getting, you know, talking all about, saying all these bad words, and the next thing, they just start fighting. I mean, they're like three, I mean, they're slamming. I mean, they picks one guy up, slams him. You know, the guy looks at me, he's like, Pastor, do you want to go? I go, no, I haven't seen nothing like this since I've been in jail. Let's watch this, man. And... Uh, we just kind of stood there, calm, none, you know, and the people from Starbucks walk out. We're calling the cops. It's on video. And I'm like, no, let's watch it for a little bit. No, I'm joking. I mean, but, but it, just, it just reminded me as I close, watch this. It just reminded me how broken. These are 16-year-olds that are broken. So what they wanted to do to each other was break each other because the world has only given them brokenness. Jude says this, 
then you must show mercy to those whose faith is wavering. Rescue others by snatching them from the flames of judgment. Show mercy to steal others. But here it is. Watch this. But do so with great caution, hating the sins that contaminate their lives. In other words, listen, I'm going to help you, but I'm not going to. I'm not going to, I can't be around you all the time. Why? Because that sin in your life, listen, I've been freed from that. I've been, I've been healed from that brokenness. But I know somebody named Jesus who can heal your life today. I do. And then lastly, as I close, number three, renew your relationship with God. God wants you to renew his, your relationship with him. And here's what the Bible says. I love this. In Peter chapter 3. It says, but we are looking forward, watch this, to the what? We're looking forward to that. That's something we get to look forward to. And the new what? Yes. We get to look forward to that. The new heaven that's going to be on earth. It's not going to, we're not going to, it's not going to be paradise. They're in paradise. We're gonna, if, 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 we, if, we, if, if we last until the Lord comes, we're, we're going to experience a new heaven on earth. Look what it says. That he's promised a world filled with God's righteousness. So we know this. Hear me today as I close. Watch this. Here we know this. That the new heaven and the new earth is a world. It's not clouds. Come on, put that back up there. It's not clouds. Look what it says. But we are looking forward to the new heaven and the new earth. He has promised a world, not clouds, not a sky, filled with God's righteousness. And so, dear friends, while you are waiting for these things to what? Because we know they are. Make every effort to be found living peaceful lives that are pure and blameless in his sight. Come on. Come on. You ought to give the Lord a clap offering on that, right? I'm living. I'm living my life. I'm experiencing. Now watch this. This is what's so beautiful about worship. This is what's so beautiful about a moment that we're in right now. Here's what's so beautiful about it. We taste in heaven right now. We get a taste of it. Man, when we worship God and you feel this presence, it's heaven kissing earth right there. It's a taste of it. Now imagine, imagine times of worship, tears flowing down your eyes. No one made you cry. What was happening? The presence of God, listen to me, the presence of God that is coming down, which means it's coming from paradise. It's coming down. Watch this. It touches earth. And the reason why tears flow down your eyes sometimes during service is not because I make you cry or worship. Here's why. Because a place that's perfect is touching an imperfect place. Are you hearing me? Pastor Obed, you made me cry. No, 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 I didn't make you cry. You tasted heaven. You tasted paradise. Pastor Obed, I walked out of church and I felt so good because what was perfect touched you. Imagine living 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Because why? It's the new heaven, the new earth God has for us. It's the first the first Easter service. I wanted to preach this to our church first because I know you're going to be so relentless to invite people because you want to invite people for this reason. A broken world will only produce broken people. And like myself, I don't want my family to stay broken. But I wanted to talk to you first because I want to make sure we are right with God. I want to make sure our life that, listen, when we pray this prayer, the prayer of the Lord Jesus Christ and Come into our hearts. Listen, you'll never have to pray this prayer again. Because here it is. In your heart, the Holy Spirit comes in. And not only that, but he's placed eternity in it. Friends, you'll always have an understanding of what eternity is. Listen, if you're here today with every head bowed and every eyes closed, and you wonder, Lord, Pastor Obed, am I, I want to know that I'm saved. I, I really, really, really want to know that I want to, I want, I want, to live forever when it comes to when it comes to being with Christ in this new heaven new earth friends listen to me 
If heaven is real, so is hell. You'll only go to two locations. That's it. But if you pray this prayer, here's what the, it's not just praying the prayer. But he says this, if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you'll be saved. I'm not asking you to pray. I'm asking you to believe. If you're here today, say, Pastor Obed, I want to make sure. Listen, on the count of three, I want you to lift your hands. One, two, three, lift them up wherever you're at. God bless you. So many people in this place. God bless you. God bless you. Awesome. God bless you. God bless you. Those in the overflow, I see it. God bless you. Here's, here's what you're doing with your hands being lifted. You're saying this. If I have somebody who I know is in heaven, they're part of my future now. They're in paradise. They're running around the fields of the gardens right now. And you know what the Bible says? We're surrounded by clouds of witnesses. Do you actually know that they're seeing this right now? They're seeing it. They're seeing you lift their hands. I believe, I, this is just me, it's nowhere in the Bible, I believe this, that when one of our loved ones see us pray the prayer, I believe they run to the Lamb's Book of Life. They want to see that name written again. I know they're on the reserve list. They're coming when Jesus returns. Can we pray this prayer? Dear Lord, forgive me of my sins. Today I ask you to come into my heart and be the Lord of my life. Jesus, I am a sinner, but by your grace, you saved me. With your blood, you wiped away my sins. Lord, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe you came, you died, and you rose again. And I believe you're coming back for me. And I'm going to spend eternity with you in the new heaven and the new earth. In Jesus' name, I'm born again. Now, Holy Spirit, be my guidance. Be my guide as I live faith out in this broken world and begin to heal the broken places in my life. In Jesus' name. Come on, and all God's people say amen. Come on, can we give the Lord a clap offering? Amen. Come on, isn't God good?